Edward. Edward Davis Wood Jr., October 10, 1924, December 10, 1978, was an American filmmaker, actor, and author. In the 1950s, Wood made a number of low-budget films in the science fiction, crime and horror genres, intercutting stock footage. In the 1960s and 1970s, he made sexploitation movies and wrote over 80 pulp crime, horror and sex novels. In 1975, he was awarded a Golden Turkey Award as worst director of all time, renewing public interest in his work. Wood's career and camp approach has earned him and his films a cult following. Following the publication of Rudolph Gray's 1992 oral biography Nightmare of Ecstasy, The Life and Art of Edward D. Wood Jr., the public took a greater interest in Wood, leading up to director Tim Burton's biopic of Wood's life, Ed Wood, 1994, a critically acclaimed film starring Johnny Depp as Wood that turned two Academy Awards. Wood's father, Edward Sr., worked for the U.S. Postal Service as a custodian, and his family relocated numerous times around the United States. Eventually, they settled in Poughkeepsie, New York, where Ed Wood Jr. was born in 1924. According to Wood's second wife, Kathy O'Hara, Wood's mother Lillian would dress him in girls' clothing when he was a child because she had always wanted a daughter. For the rest of his life, Wood cross dressed, infatuated with the feel of anger on his skin. During his childhood, Wood was interested in the performing arts and pulp fiction. He collected comics and pulp magazines, and adored movies, most notably westerns, serials, and anything involving the occult. Buck Jones and Balaam Lugosi were two of his earliest childhood idols. He would often skip school in favor of watching pictures at the local movie theater, where stills from the day's movie would often be thrown in the trash but theater staff, allowing Wood to salvage them to add to his extensive collection. On his twelfth birthday, in 1936, Wood received as a gift his first movie camera, a Kodak Cine special. One of his first pieces of footage, and one that imbued him with pride, showed the airship Hindenburg passing over the Hudson River at Poughkeepsie, shortly before its historic crash at Lakehurst, New Jersey. One of Wood's first paid jobs was as a cinema usher, and he also sang and played drums in a band. He later fronted a singing quartet called Eddie Wood's Little Splinters, having learned to play a variety of string instruments. In 1942, Wood enlisted in the United States Marine Corps, just months after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Assigned to the 2nd Defense Battalions, he reached the rank of corporal before he was discharged. He was involved in the Battle of Tarawa, among others, and during the war, he lost his two front teeth to a Japanese soldier's rifle butt and was shot several times in the leg by a machine gunner, shown false in the Unknown War of Edward E. Wood Jr., 1942-1946 by James Pontalillo. Wood later claimed that he feared being wounded in battle more than he feared being killed. In 1947, Wood moved to Hollywood, California, where he wrote scripts and directed television pilots, commercials and several forgotten micro-budget westerns with names such as Crossroads of Laredo and Crossroad Avenger, The Legend of the Tucson Kid. In 1948, Wood wrote, produced, directed, and starred in Casual Company, a play derived from his unpublished novel, which was based on his service in the United States Marine Corps. It opened at the Village Playhouse to negative reviews on October 25. In 1952, Wood was introduced to actor Bela Lugosi by friend and fellow writer producer Alex Gordon, Wood's roommate at the time, who went on to help create American International Pictures. Lugosi's son, Bela Lugosi Jr., has been among those who felt Wood exploited the senior Lugosi's stardom, taking advantage of the fading actor when he could not refuse any work. While most documents and interviews with other Wood associates in Nightmare of Ecstasy suggest that Wood and Lugosi were genuine friends and that Wood helped Lugosi through the worst days of his depression and addiction. Lugosi had become dependent on morphine as a way of controlling his debilitating sciatica over the years, and was in a horrendous physical state. Wood built himself under a number of different pseudonyms, including Angora, in reference to Angora, his favorite female textile, and Actophthalmic, the backwards form of his favorite drink. The Vodka Gimlet. In 1953 Wood wrote and directed the exploitation semi-documentary film Glen or Glenda, originally titled I Changed My Sex, with producer George Weiss. The film starred Wood, under the alias Daniel Davis, his girlfriend Dolores Fuller, and Lou Gosey, in voiceover, as the godlike narrator. The film, loosely based on transgender woman Christine Jorgensen, was panned by critics, then and now and considered one of Wood's worst films, though many others have praised its camp qualities. 
It is notable for its emphatic and groundbreaking portrayal of LGBT issues at a time when the media was very hostile to such ideas. In 1954, Wood directed and produced a crime film, Jail Bait, originally titled The Hidden Face, along with co-writer Alex Gordon, which starred Lyle Talbot and Steve Reeves, in one of his first acting jobs. Bela Lugosi was supposed to play the lead role of the plastic surgeon, but was busy working on another film project when filming started and had to bow out. In 1955 Wood produced and directed the horror film Bride of the Monster, originally titled Bride of the Atom, based on an original story idea by Alex Gordon which he called The Atomic Monster. It starred Bela Lugosi, Swedish wrestler Tor Johnson, and Loretta King. Following the making of the film, Lugosi admitted himself to the state hospital for treatment of his drug addiction. In 1956 Wood produced, wrote, and directed the science fiction film Plan 9 from Outer Space, originally titled Grave Robbers from Outer Space, which starred Lugosi. In his final film role, Lugosi died during production, Tor Johnson, Vampira, Mylan Urmi, Tom Mason, who doubled for Lugosi in several scenes, and the amazing Criswell as the film's narrator. Plan 9 premiered, as Grave Robbers, at a very small screening in 1957, was only released theatrically under the title Plan 9 from Outer Space in 1959, and was finally sold to late-night television in 1961, thereby finding its audience over the years. It became Wood's best-known film and received a cult following after 1980, when Michael Medved declared this film the worst film ever made in his book The Golden Turkey Awards. In 1956 Wood wrote and produced the exploitation film The Violent Years, originally titled Teenage Girl Gang, with director William M. Morgan, starring Playboy model Jean Moorhead. In 1958 Wood wrote, produced, and directed Night of the Ghouls, originally titled Revenge of the Dead, starring Ken Duncan, Tor Johnson, S. Lobo from Bride of the Monster, Criswell, Duke Moore, and Valda Hansen. The film may have been released marginally in March 1959 and then promptly vanished from sight for nearly three decades. For many years, it was thought to be a lost film but it was rediscovered and finally released on home video in 1984. In 1958, Wood also co-wrote the screenplay for The Bride and the Beast, 1958, which was directed by Adrian Weiss. In 1960, Wood wrote and directed the exploitation film The Sinister Urge, originally titled Bracket Queen, starring Ken Duncan, Duke Moore, and Carl Anthony. Filmed in just five days, this is the last mainstream film Wood directed, although it has grindhouse elements stop the film contains an eerily prescient scene, in which Carl Anthony's character states, I look at this slush, and I try to remember, at one time, I made good movies. Wood's own career soon spiraled downward into a blur of smut racket nudie goody flicks, softcore pornography and X-rated novel sand films. The scenes of teenagers at a pizza place had been shot in 1956 for Wood's unfinished juvenile delinquency film Rock and Roll Hell, a.k.a. Hellborn. This includes a fight scene performed by Ed Wood, uncredited, and actor Conrad Brooks. In 1963 Wood wrote the screenplay for Shotgun Wedding, an exploitation film about hillbillies marrying child brides, and his 1965 transitional film Orgy of the Dead, originally titled Nudie Ghoulies combining the horror and grindhouse skin flit genres. Wood handled various production details while Steve and Apostoloof directed under the pseudonym A.C. Stephen. The film begins with a recreation of the opening scene from the then-unreleased Night of the Ghouls. Criswell, wearing one of Lugosi's old capes, rises from his coffin to deliver an introduction taken almost word for word from the previous film. Set in a misty graveyard, the Lord of the Dead, Criswell, and his sexy consort, the Black Ghoul, a vampire look-alike, preside over a series of macabre performance speed topless dancers from beyond the grave, recruited by Wood from local strip clubs. The film also features a wolfman and a mummy. Together, Wood and Apostoloof went on to make a string of sexploitation films up to 1977. Wood co-wrote the screenplays and occasionally acted. Venus Flytrap, 1970, aka The Revenge of Dr. X, a US-slash-Japan horror film was based on an unproduced Ed Wood screenplay from the 1950s. In 1969, Wood appeared in The Photographer, a.k.a. Love Feast or Pretty Models All in a Row, the first of two films produced by a Marine buddy, Joseph F. Robertson, portraying a photographer using his position to engage in sexual antics with models. He had a smaller role in Robertson's second film, Mrs. Stone's Thing, 
as a transvestite who spends his time at a party trying on lingerie in a bedroom. In 1970, Wood made his own pornographic film, Take It Out in Trade, a softcore take on Philip Marlowe detective film stop the following year, he produced, wrote, and directed Necromania, sometimes subtitled The Tale of Weird Love, under the pseudonym Don Miller. The film was an early entry to the new subgenre of hardcore pornographic film. But lost for years, it resurfaced in edited form on Mike Brainy's Something Weird imprint in the late 1980s, then was re-released on DVD by Fleshbot Films in 2005. Throughout the 1970s, Wood worked with friend Stephen C. Apostoloff, usually co-writing scripts, but also serving as an assistant director and associate producer. Together they had made Wood's Orgy of the Dead in 1965. His last known on-screen appearance was in Apostoloff's Fugitive Girls, a.k.a. Five Loose Women, in 1974, where he played both a gas station attendant called Pops and a sheriff on the women's trail. Beginning in the early 1960s up until his death, Wood wrote at least 80 lurid crime and sex novels in addition to hundreds of short stories and non-fiction pieces for magazines and daily newspapers. 32 stories known to be written by Wood, he sometimes wrote under pseudonyms such as Angora and Dr. T. K. Peters, are collected in Blood Splatters Quickly, published by Orr Books in 2014. Novels include Black Lace Drag, 1963, reissued in 1965 as Killer and Drag, Orgy of the Dead. 1965, Devil Girls, 1967, Death of a Transvestite, 1967, The Executives, 1968, The Photographer, 1969, Take It Out and Trade, 1970, The Only House in Town, 1970, Necromania, 1971, The Undergraduate, 1972, A Study of Fetishes and Fantasies, 1973 and Fugitive Girls, 1974. In Nightmare of Ecstasy, Myla Nurmi said she declined Wood's offer to do a nude scene sitting in a coffin for the film version of his Necromania, claiming she was recovering from a major stroke at the time. In 1965, Wood wrote the quasi-memoir Hollywood Rat Race, which was eventually published in 1998. In it, Wood advises new writers to just keep on writing. Even if your story gets worse, you'll get better, and also recounts tales of dubious authenticity such as how he and Bela Lugosi entered the world of nightclub cabaret. Wood had a long-term relationship with actress and songwriter Dolores Fuller, whom he met in late 1952. The two lived together for a time and Wood cast Fuller in three of his films, Glen or Glenda, Jail Bait, and Bride of the Monster. Fuller later said she initially had no idea that Wood was a crossdresser and was mortified when she saw Wood dressed as a woman in Glen or Glenda. The couple broke up in 1955 after Wood cast another actress in the lead role of Bride of the Monster, Wood originally wrote the part for Fuller and reduced her part to a one-minute cameo, and because of Wood's excessive drinking. While making Bride of the Monster in late 1955, Wood married Norma McCarty. McCarty appeared as Edie, the airplane steward as in Plan 9 from Outer Space. The marriage was annulled in 1956. Wood married his second wife, Kathy O'Hara in 1959. They remained married until Wood's death in 1978. Kathy died on June 26, 2006, having never remarried. In Wood's 1992 biography Nightmare of Ecstasy, The Life and Art of Edward D. Wood Jr., Wood's wife Kathy recalls that Wood told her that his mother dressed him in girls' clothing as a child. Kathy stated that Wood's transvestism was not a sexual inclination but rather a new maternal comfort derived mainly from Angora fabric, Angora is featured in many of Wood's films. Even in his later years, Wood was not shy about going out in public dressed in drag as Shirley, his female alter ego, who also appeared in many of his screenplays and stories. By 1978, Wood's depression had worsened, and he and his wife Kathy had both become alcoholics. They were evicted from their Hollywood apartment on Yucca Street on Thursday, December 7, 1978 in total poverty. The couple moved into the North Hollywood apartment of their friend, actor Peter Kodot Wood spent the weekend drinking vodka. Around noon on Sunday, December 10, Wood felt ill and went to lie down in Co's bedroom. From the bedroom, he asked Kathy to bring him a drink, which she refused to do. A few minutes later he yelled out, Kathy, I can't breathe. A plea Kathy ignored as she later said she was tired of Wood bossing her around. After hearing no movement in the bedroom for 20 minutes, Kathy sent a friend to check on Wood, who discovered him dead from a heart attack. Kathy later said, 
I still remember when I went into that room that afternoon and he was dead, his eyes and mouth were wide open. I'll never forget the look in his eyes. He clutched at the sheets. It looked like he'd seen hell. Wood was cremated, and his ashes were scattered at sea. In 1986 in an essay paying homage to Wood in incredibly strange films, Jim Morton wrote, Eccentric and individualistic, Edward D. Wood Jr. was a man born to film. Lesser men, if forced to make movies under the conditions Wood faced, would have thrown up their hands in defeat. In 1994 director Tim Burton released the biopic Ed Wood, starring Johnny Depp in the title role and Martin Lando, who won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his portrayal of Bela Lugosi. It also won an Academy Award for Best Makeup for Rick Baker. Conrad Brooks appeared in the movie, in a cameo role of Barman. The film received mass critical acclaim, but did poorly at the box office. It has since developed a cult following. In 1996 Reverend Steve Galindo of Seminole, Oklahoma, created a legally recognized religion with Wood as its official savior. Found it as a joke, the Church of Ed Wood now boasts more than 3,500 baptized followers. Woodites, as Steve's followers are called, celebrate Woodmas on October 10, which is Ed's birthday. Numerous parties and concerts are held worldwide to celebrate Woodmas. On October 4 to 5, 2003, Horror host Mr. Lobo was canonized as the patron saint of late-night movie hosts and insomniacs in the Church of Edwood. In 1997 the University of Southern California began holding an annual Edwood Film Festival, in which student teams are challenged to write, film, and edit an Edwood-inspired short film based on a pre-assigned theme. Past themes have included Rebel Without a Bra, 2004, What's That in Your Pocket, 2005, and Slippery When Wet, 2006. From 1993 to 1994, three of Wood's films, Bride of the Monster, The Violent Years, and The Sinister Urge, were featured on the television series Mystery Science Theater 3000, which gave those works wider exposure. Producers of MS Tech considered including Plan 9, but found it had too much dialogue for the show's format. In 1998, Wood's previously unfilmed script I Woke Up Early the Day I Died was finally produced, starring Billy Zane and Christina Ritchie with appearances by Tippi Hedren, Bud Court, Sandra Bernard, Karen Black, John Ritter and many others. Outside of a brief New York theatrical engagement, the film did not receive a commercial release in the United States, and was only available on video in Germany due to contractual difficulties. In 2001, horror film director and heavy metal musician Rob Zombie released The Sinister Urge, which is titled after Wood's film. In 2002, American horror punk supergroup Murder Dolls released the album Beyond the Valley of the Murder Dolls, which features the single Dead in Hollywood and makes a reference to Wood with the lyrics, You can knock on Ed Wood, but it won't do you no good slash cause all of my heroes are dead in Hollywood. In 2005, the Plan 9 cast were lampooned in an episode of the television series Deadly Cinema. The following year, clips of this episode were featured in documentary Vampira, the movie. In 2006, MS Tech head writer and host Michael J. Nelson recorded an audio commentary track for a DVD release of a colorized version of Plan 9 from Outer Space. In 2009, Nelson and fellow MS Tech alums Kevin Murphy and Bill Corbett mocked Plan 9 again in their very first Rift Tracks Live event, coinciding with the film's 50th anniversary. In 2012, director John Johnson announced plans to film a remake of Plan 9 from Outer Space, released straight to DVD in 2015. In 2017 Dreamer the Edward musical was produced by award-winning composer Rick Tell. Wood's 1972 film The Undergraduate is considered to be a lost film, as was his 1970 film Take It Out and Trade. An 80-minute print of Take It Out and Trade was later discovered and publicly exhibited at Anthology Film Archives in New York City in September 2014. Silent outtakes from the film were released by Something Weird Video. Wood's 1971 film Necromania was also believed lost for years, until an edited version resurfaced, at a yard sale in 1992, followed by a complete unedited print in 2001. A complete print of the previously lost Wood pornographic film, The Young Mary Eds, was discovered in 2004. It was released as a part of the four DVD set, The Lost Sex Films of Ed Wood Jr., by Alpha Blue Archives in July 2014. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.